We're talking with author Ann Bailey and Pete Trinidad with United Steelworkers and also Jan Gentry, a retired steelworker, about the, the, both the book Steel Closets and the resolution that is now pending before the National Steelworkers uh, Union to uh, include language that would protect gays, lesbians, uh, transgender, and bisexuals. Um, Pete, what, what can we expect to see at the National Union? Well, once a local union passes a resolution, it's sent to the uh, international and prepared by them to go to the uh, specific committee that needs to review it. It will be read to the delegates at the convention. There will be approximately 6,000 delegates there. Uh, the contents of that will be discussed, and then there will be a vote. And uh, if the vote passes, uh, we will try to, or our bargaining position in all contracts will be to include uh, the uh, LGTB uh, language in there to protect them and also uh, create a, uh, uh, I guess, a sponsor or a, uh, someone you could talk to at the district level in confidence, off the record or on the record, so that you could discuss these issues uh, openly. And why is that important? Jan, why is it important to have somebody that you, you can go to confidentially about these kinds of issues? Oh, that would have been wonderful when I was working at the steel mill because I, I had a, a few instances of harassment that it, I felt made a, a little bit of a hostile work environment, and I would have loved to have had somebody to talk to. I mean, you felt you didn't really have that when you were working? Mm, no, I didn't, I didn't think uh, anybody would really hear what I was saying, and, and they probably wouldn't understand why it bothered me so much. Why is this coming out so, so far after we, we've already dealt with um, issues of minorities and issues of women in the workplace? Why do you think this is coming so much farther down the line? I have an explanation for that. Um, women and racial minorities are visible and they can't hide. So therefore it's easy for them to identify each other and form groups to support each other. So when women were hired in in the 70s, for example, women could identify other women and get together and fight for each other. Whereas gay, lesbian, bisexual and transgender people are hiding. So of the people I interviewed, most of them thought they were the only one. They didn't know each other. They're hiding from each other. So they can't get together and say, let's work together to form protections for each other. And so it's hanging behind other civil rights movements because it's possible to be invisible. Impossible, and in some cases, people feel that they have no other choice. Yes, it's possible and sort of coerced to be invisible. So is this largely symbolic, Pete? Is this just? Um, there's a lot, we're talking about same-sex marriage and like that this is a national issue. Is this mostly symbolism that this is coming before the union now? Um, I think it's a change in times. Um, there's a turnover in the, the workforce. You have uh, different workers coming into the workforce now that are maybe worked in a more of a, a situation where they're exposed to that. The different types of uh, TV shows they have on television now. There's all kinds of different ways to, to, uh, uh, to become aware of this situation or to, to seek knowledge. And uh, as that happens, this different sediment or mind, mind uh, train of thought uh, is starting to be expressed and to be shared on the shop floor. Is this, was this book a revelation that there were so many gay and lesbian steelworkers out there in the mills? Did you um, think that was the case? I don't know if I'd use the word revelation. You know, there was always some uh, uh, some you know people talking about it so what I think this confirms it uh, it was always suspected it's just like anything else um, and, and and hit it right on the head it, people become invisible and I think it's because they're afraid of just how it's going to be perceived and as they discuss it and start to discuss it openly they'll find out that it's really in, in the majority of the cases, it, it isn't that big of a problem. And the resolution passed at the local 6787? It passed at our local union meeting, uh, our July meeting. Uh, it was not unanimous. There was one nay. Uh, but the uh, it, it, it's going to move forward. It, it doesn't have to be unanimous. Uh, it's how the steel workers do business on the shop floor at the local union meeting. Uh, but with that being said, that uh, it still has to go through the national you know, the convention. And uh, I'm getting good feedback from other locals, and I think we'll be successful there. And some other locals have actually passed resolutions, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Do you think you're going to see a very different workplace in uh, big integrated steel in the next five years after this? Yes, I do. I How mean, is it going to be different? 
Well, think about it. Everybody in a work environment or a family or a school, everybody wants to be accepted by their peers. So you're not going to take the chance of saying, I'm a gay man, if you are fairly sure in advance from just sort of comments that you hear back and forth that they don't want to hear it. And if there's leadership from the top that says, these people are among us and we need to accept them and it's fine, that's going to make people feel comfortable. And the thing is about coming out, once a few people do it, then more people can become comfortable. So if there's leadership and a sense of safety, some people are going to say, yeah, that's me. And other, maybe the first people will freak out, but once there gets to be enough of it going on, then people can feel comfortable revealing their personal life and not worry that co their coworkers who they like and work with and want to feel comfortable among are going to freak out or be uncomfortable. So it's not even necessarily about harassment or discrimination as much as about sort of comfort in the work culture. And that so far really hasn't happened. Now you're still not seeing people being open about it, at least mm -hmm. not at this point. So yes. We'll see, I guess, over the next couple of years. Well, retired steel worker Jan Gentry, Ann Bailey, author of Steel Closets, Pete Trinidad, uh, Vice President with uh, United Steel Workers Local 6787. Thanks to all of you for being on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us.